What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to give you an introduction into square roots, radicals, and I'm also going to explain why you can't take the square root of a negative number. All right. So uh, let's start with this right here. So maybe you've seen this symbol before, or maybe you haven't. But in either case, this is called a radical symbol. Okay. Sometimes people call this a square root symbol, but that's not technically correct. This is called a radical symbol okay and what we normally do is put some number in here okay so any number and the number that's inside of here is called the radicand radicand all right so there's a little vocab for you now what does this symbol right here the radical actually do well you can kind of think of this as the opposite of exponents all right so for example let's say we had let's start with something like this let's say we had this 3 squared right here. Now, 3 squared is the same thing as 3 times 3, right, which is equal to 9, right? But what if I started on this side instead? Okay, so let's start with 9 this time, and let's say I wanted to know what is the square root of 9. Okay, well, if I'm taking the square root of 9, all I'm asking is what number times itself is equal to 9 in here? Okay, well, that would be equal to 3, right? Because 3 times itself is equal to 9, right? So the square root of 9 is equal to 3, just 3, right? It's not 3 times 3, it's not 3 squared, it's just 3. Okay, so again, if we started with 4 squared, 4 squared is the same thing as 4 times 4, which is equal to 16. But if I asked you, what is the square root of 16? Well, then your answer would simply be equal to 4. Okay, because here we're just saying what number times itself is equal to 16? Well, that would be 4, right? So I think you can kind of see the pattern a little bit now, right? So what's the square root of 25? Okay, so here I'm just asking what number times itself is equal to 25? And in this case, that would be 5, right? Because 5 times 5 is equal to 25. Okay, and just one more for good measure, the square root of 36 would be equal to 6, right? Because 6 times 6 is equal to 36. Okay, now, uh, one thing I want to point out here is, as you can see, all of our answers were positive, right? So here we had positive 3, here we have positive 4, positive 5, positive 6, okay? So whenever you take the square root of a number, your answer is always going to be positive. And the reason for that is because uh, when you take the square root of a uh, number here, what we're really looking for is the, and I'll write it right here, the principal root, okay? Or in other words, we're looking for the positive root, okay? And the reason I'm pointing this out is because you might be able to convince yourself that your answer could be negative three also, right? Because here we're saying what number times itself is equal to positive nine? Well, like we said, three times three is equal to positive nine, right? But the other thing is negative three times negative 3 is also equal to positive 9, right? So you might ask yourself, well, then in that case, can't my answer right here be negative 3 also? And the answer is no, because whenever you're taking the square root of a number, we're only looking for the positive root, the principal root, okay? So we're only looking for the positive number. Okay, the only way you would get a negative 3 for your answer right here is if there was a negative sign out here. Uh, next to your radical, okay? Because then in this case, you'd say, all right, what's the square root of nine? Well, again, that's positive three. But since we have this negative sign out here now, we have to carry that over right there, okay? So if we had the negative square root of nine written like this, then your answer would be negative three, okay? And it, it applies to, you know, every other example here. So it, again, if we had a negative symbol on the outside, right? Very important, it's not on the inside, it's on the outside then you would just carry that negative symbol to right there, okay? So then here your answer would be negative four. Okay, now the reason I try to be very clear that the negative sign is not on the inside is because this is an illegal move, okay? You can't do that. So let me explain why we can't do that. Okay, so if I wanted to take the square root of negative 16, okay, so here I'm asking myself, what number can I multiply by itself to get negative 16? And the issue there is that number does not exist, right? Because 
4 times 4, that's equal to positive 16, right? Negative 4 times negative 4 is also equal to positive 16, okay? The only way to get negative 16 is to do negative 4 times positive 4, right? That's equal to negative 16. But the problem here is that these two numbers are not the exact same number, right? This one's negative and this one's positive. Okay, so that's why we can't take the square root of a negative number because there is no number we can multiply by itself to get this negative number, right? So that's why we can't have a negative sign in here, okay? Again, we can have a negative sign on the outside and then here we're just saying what's the square root of six, positive 16, right? And as we already know, that's equal to positive 4, right? But we still have this negative sign out here, right? So then we just carry it out to the front right there. Okay, so be very careful when you're dealing with your negative signs. Make sure it's always on the outside and not on the inside. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.